These nothing towns could be the best places in America to weather an economic collapse, but. We're 10 to 15 years from retirement and not ready at all. Our world is so effed up right now with crazy hot inflation, financial markets tanking, and a recession depression looming large. So the hubby and I took a 2,500 mile road trip around the US Northwest to see if there's a better place to live to ride out the storm. We started in Tahoe, drove down to Vegas, then up through Utah, Montana, and Idaho. We saw some awesome places along the way and you can watch our other videos if if you want to know more. On our final leg of the journey, we headed from Spokane down to Walla Walla on 395 South. It was a pretty monotonous drive through a lot of grassland, much like Kansas. We found this crazy thing in the bathroom at some random gas station and Uno bars in the wild. This is my absolute favorite candy bar and they're really hard to find. A random Washington gas station in the middle of nowhere. We arrived in Walla Walla for another Marriott stay using points, stayed in for dinner, then explored a bit the next day. Walla Walla is like the Napa of Eastern Washington, only cheaper. Surrounded by vineyards with grassy mountains in the distance, it definitely has a farm town feel, but with a definite upscale tinge. It's downtown was several blocks long with lots of interesting shops and restaurants that had outdoor dining on the street, but with real businesses in the mix too. I only saw one homeless guy and he seemed nice. There's a university in town. It's not too big, but it has all the basic shopping you'd need, and it seemed clean and well kept. The median list price for a home in Walla Walla is $695,000, and it's a strong seller's market with prices plateauing. Anything under $569 sells in 7 to 14 days. Here's what you get for $579, the cheapest I could find a goat breeding ranch on eight acres near town. And if you want something more upscale, here's what you get for close to a million this cute modern farmhouse with its own vineyard on five acres. I could totally live there. Walla Walla seems like it'd be a really good place to weather an economic collapse surrounded by farmland and far from everything, but there wasn't a lot of hiking in the area. And for me, it was too far from any big forested mountains. I need mountain drama. It's a thing with me. I don't know why. I just love mountains. They fill my soul. The drive to Burns was unexpectedly beautiful. Once we got through the unmemorable town of Pendleton, we soon climbed out of the grasslands into the Utamia National Forest on a lonely section of 395, passing by some remote state parks and driving through the two block community of Long Creek, which was in a beautiful pastoral valley surrounded by forested mountains. It seemed like it'd be a really good place to camp in the summer. After crossing more mountains, we descended into the cute little town of Mount Vernon, population 786. Realistically, it's too small for us, but I could totally see the appeal of living there. It had a pub, cafe, winery, feed store, and gas station, and you could get groceries a few miles away in nearby John Day. It was surrounded by pretty mountains, though there was some fire damage, but overall, it was a charming little town. The median list price for a home in Mount Vernon is $447,000, and it's a buyer's market, the first we saw on this entire trip. However, this is based on extremely limited inventory of only four homes for sale, with prices drifting lower. Anything under $449 sells in 7 to 21 days. I could not find any properties on Zillow to show you at the time of this recording, but there were several in neighboring John Day, which we'll get to in a minute. There didn't seem to be any formal hiking around Mount Vernon, though it did look like there were a bunch of Jeep trails nearby. John Day, population 1740, had its own charm, along with all the basics you need for a nice, quiet life in a secluded part of the state. Beyond gas and groceries, the town had local coffee, a brewery, and several restaurants, including one called the Ugly Truth Bar and Grill. Okay, that sounds like my kind of place. The median list price for a home in John Day is $300 85,000 and it's a slight seller's market with prices leveling off for now. Anything under 465 sells in 24 to 83 days. And here's what you get for 350,000, a funky old 2,200 square foot house on an acre with peak mountain views. And here's what you get for 1.25 million, this great country property on 166 acres with territorial views. The hiking scene in John Day seemed similar to Mount Vernon and there were some noticeably burnt areas. So, not my favorite scenery. Arriving in Burns, we checked into a modest roadside motel that we actually had to pay for as there were no more Marriott's between Walla Walla and home. Or points left to redeem for that matter. 
I hate to be negative and I'm sure it's heaven for some, but Burns seemed like a sad, sleepy little middle of nowhere, nothing going on kind of town. It had a decent downtown with local businesses, quite a few restaurants, including some fast food. It had a couple breweries and several coffee places, groceries, gas. I mean, it really had everything you need to live and it's probably a good place to hide out because halfway between Bend and Boise, there's just nothing much around. There was nothing for sale in Burns, so I could not pull a report from my usual source. Instead, I looked at some recent sales on Zillow to get a sense of pricing. So here's the most recent sale from June 2022, a nice country property on 9.5 acres for 485,000, and the next most recent sale from late 2021, this custom property on 9 acres for 430,000. Hiking seemed like a big zero, though the area the area is known for ATV trails, nearby fishing, and hot springs, so there's probably more to it than meets the eye. But essentially, it's a desert, not my cup of tea. I need a little more shishi. Is that a crime? Next stop, Alturas, California. This was another lonely, beautiful drive through some really interesting Great Basin terrain. By this point, we'd run out of Star Trek podcasts, so we delved into Star Wars. Now we're doing some some training with... Uh, Full-on Rocky shit. Yeah. Yeah. With a Yoda on your back. This is where we get into some real Force stuff. George Lucas and Irving Kirshner and all of them were really worried that this whole sequence of all this talk is going to drag the movie down and everyone's going to be I love this stuff. Along the way, we passed through the little town of Lakeview, population 2559, another place that wasn't even on my radar. It was quiet, but cute, with several restaurants, a few coffee places, but no brewery, though it did have a small hospital. And it was located in a pretty pastoral valley, surrounded by mountains, covered with pinyon pines, not far from Goose Lake, which I suspect is seasonal. Lakeview also didn't have enough inventory to pull a report, so let's look at what sold. The most recent I could find, a manufactured home on 130 acres with an extensive horse setup, sold for 620,000 last December. Here's the next most recent sale, a 364-acre cattle ranch with a four-bedroom stick built house that sold for 1.08 million last summer. The cheapest house offered for sale is this property for 525,000 and on the high end you can get a 1.8 million 63 acre elk farm with a four bedroom three bath house which has been on the market for 56 days. So this area even though it's literally in the middle of nowhere, it's not cheap. There were a couple hiking trails in the mountains east of town, but it seemed more conducive for ATVs as there were a ton of Jeep trails around. We arrived in Alturas, settled into another roadside motel, and went downtown for the best deal steak dinner we'd had in years. Only $24 for a bacon-wrapped filet complete with sides. It was like inflation hadn't caught up to this place yet. So. Highly recommend the Niles Roadhouse, even as service is slow. Honestly, service was slow almost everywhere we went on this trip because restaurants were having trouble attracting staff. Yeah, hate to be negative, but Alturas seemed like another sad, sleepy town in the middle of nowhere with nothing going on. But if you want to get away from people, this may be the place. It had all the basics, gas, groceries, pharmacy, a bunch of restaurants, including Thai and Mexican, some coffee places, but it didn't have a brewery as far as I could tell. However, the median list price for a home in Alturas was $229,000, the cheapest we saw the entire trip. In a slight seller's market with demand heating up and prices rising, anything under $385 was selling in 0 to 80 days. I could only find a couple of properties currently for sale in the area. On the low end, there's this odd live workspace for 105,000 on over a third of an acre. And on the high end, this 2,200 square foot mountain style property on 2.5 acres offered for 385,000. We visit it in the spring when things are pretty and green, but I've seen it in the summer when it's brown and desolate, so not the greatest scenery. There didn't seem to be a lot of hiking nearby, just Jeep trails, but in the South Warner wilderness to the east, there did seem to be a couple of options. But overall, not for me. So that was it. Over 2,500 miles in a great big loop around the Northwest US with no clear answers. I did see some places I really liked. Helena, Sandpoint, the Spokane Valley. But are they really that much better than where we live now? I'm not sure. And Ted's not convinced. 
Maybe we just stay where we are, stock up on food, and grow lettuce in the condo. But I can't keep chickens here, and I do worry about the food shortages that farmers are predicting for next fall. This inflation is really killing us. We've got to do something to become more resilient, and I just don't know where to go from here. If you've got ideas, put them in the comments. I'm totally open. <sighs> it's a conundrum. The human race is in a conundrum, and I don't know what the answer is but I'll be thinking about it.